welcome back to another video in the grappling hook tutorial series here inside Construct 3. In the last video, we set up our grapple dismount code to be able to dismount our player from the swinging vine by using the jump key. We also created this block of code that checks to make sure we have enough distance to fire the target in the first place. And we did that by creating this function. Let's go to our layout. I'm going to zoom out a little. And then come over here to the project panel and highlight the OBJ grab angle. As we've been testing this out, every time we launch a target, we see our angle that we have created. And it stays on screen because we never tell it to go invisible in the code like we do the vine. But we don't really need to because if we just highlight it in the project panel, we can come over to its properties and untick initially visible. That way we'll never see it in the game. We also did the same thing with our collision target, the blue one. I turned its visibility back on so we could test some things, but I'm going to go ahead and untick that. And then on the layout, if you have anything uh, out of place that you changed to test your game with, now would be a good time to reset those back to their place. I'm going to put our player back at the beginning. And then another thing I want to take care of, the number of events that we have created so far are reaching the 50 event limit if you are working with the free version. In our project panel, we can right click on this topmost folder up here and go down to tools and look at our view project statistics. And ours says we have 34 events. So that's 34 events in our event sheets, but we also have two global variables. And I know those count as events as well. So we're at least 36. I don't know what else gets counted as an event, but we might have more than that. Either way, what I am saying is if you're working with the free version, you might be nearing the end of this tutorial, which is fine because I'm going to play this. Our game mechanic is complete. We can launch it. We can swing it, dismount it. Uh, we have our collision check there that's uh, too close to launch. The floor check. We can swing. And the mechanic is there. And it works just fine. So, for the rest of us, I'm going to move on to another feature. And that is to implement a restriction to our player once they are attached to the vine. For those of you working in the free version, if you have a background layer and another layer with everything on it, you will not be able to do this next one because the bar has to have its own layer. A workaround could be that you get rid of the background layer and then just have this other layer that we're about to create. I'm going to go over to the layout and zoom out a little and I'm going to double click on the layout and I'm going to grab the sprite object and I'm going to insert it uh, somewhere in this top left area of our layout and resize it to 100 pixels for the width and I'm going to go 6 pixels for the height. The origin I'm going to put at the bottom left and going to get my fill tool and I'm going to pick just a plain white color and fill it. I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to rename it obj underscore bar. I have it selected and over in the properties you can see that it's on the collisions layer. Come over here to our layers panel and right click and add a layer to the top. And I'm just going to name this one bar. Now we can grab our obj bar object and change the layer to the bar layer. Now I'm going to zoom in and this dotted line that we've talked about a few times in this project is our viewport. This is the size in reference to the size of our layout that we see on screen. So I want this to be somewhere in one of the corners or off to the side. I'm going to choose the top right and I'm going to go up to the top, come down a little, and maybe go in. So something like that. 
So here's my coordinates of where it is located, 576 by 32. Select the bar layer. That brings up its properties over here. I'm going to click into where it says parallax. It's at 100% right now. I'm going to change it to 0, 0. Hit enter. And what that means, this layer is going to appear full screen over everything else and it's not going to move at all. So let's go ahead and play this. And you can see it up here in our top right. And no matter where we go, our camera follows our player. And that bar stays in the top right. Okay, I'm going to lock that layer. And I'm going to move our OBJ bar into our OBJ folder. Zoom out a little. And in our event sheet, I am going to create a new group. So right click, add group, and I'm going to call this one grapple strength bar. So the idea of what we're going to do is once the grapple target attaches, this bar is going to start shrinking. And when it gets down to a zero value, then our grapple is going to break and everything's going to reset. So we're going to create a variable to keep track of the width of our bar. In fact, I'm going to lock everything else up except for the bar layer. And I'm going to select the bar so the properties come up. And I want to add an instance variable to the bar object. Let's add a new instance variable. And I'm going to call this grapple strength. And it's going to be a number. Okay, then over in our event sheet, we can add an event to our grapple strength bar group, and I want to set the width of that bar every frame of the game. So go into system, let's choose every tick for our condition, and add an action. Let's go grab that bar, OBJ bar, set the width to the value of the instance variable. So let's call the object which is obj bar dot and then reference the instance variable which is grapple strength. So every frame of the game, every tick, the bar is going to be set to the width of what grapple strength value is. If we go over to the layout and we have our bar selected in the properties we can change grapple strength to 100 by default. Okay, now we need to tell our bar when to start shrinking and when to not be affected at all. We can do that with another instance variable. So make sure our bar is selected and edit instance variables. Let's add another one. And I'm going to call this one grapple attached. And that's going to be uh, one for true, zero for false. Back on our event sheet. Let's make that check. I'm going to add an event to grapple strength bar group. And I'm going to go get that bar. And I want to compare an instance variable. And I want to know when grapple attached is true. When the grapple is attached, then I want to start shrinking the bar. Add an action. Let's go get our bar. Set the value, set value of grapple strength to itself, whatever value it is on that tick, on that frame of the game, and then subtract from it. So let's call the instance variable value first. So we type in the object name, obj bar dot, and then the instance variable, which is grapple strength. And then we want to subtract, and I'm going to subtract, I'm going to go 0.3. You can play around with this value and see if that is uh, too fast or too slow for you. So as long as we are attached, it is going to continuously subtract 0.3 from grapple strength, which starts out as 100. Okay, so now we need to tell this instance variable when to change to 1. Once we make contact with our collision target, then we want to say that the grapple is attached and set that to true. So let's add an action in this block. Go get our obj bar and we want our instance variables, we want to set the value of grapple attached to true, which is one. But then when we dismount, 
we want to make sure that we tell it that it is now false. So let's add an action, go into our objects, get the bar, scroll down to instance variables, set the value of grapple attached to zero, which is false because we've just dismounted, we are no longer attached. And then in our function that we created, we also want to make sure that we are no longer attached. So let's add an action, go get our bar, scroll down to set value, grapple attached to false, zero. And I'm gonna move this up with our grapple launched variable. Okay, back in our main event sheet, in our grapple strength bar, once we have set grapple attached to true, we start shrinking the width of the bar. If we dismount or cancel, we want to reset our bar to its original width. So in our grapple dismount, let's add an action, go get our bar, and then scroll down to set value. And we want to set the value of grapple strength back to its default number, which is 100, because it is reading every tick the width of that instance variable value. So over here in our function, we need to reset it as well. So let's add an action, get our bar, and scroll down to set value, and we want our strength back to 100. What happens when we keep subtracting this and it gets down to nothing. So let's make that check. Let's add an event and let's grab our bar, compare the width. So compare width of our object bar. We want to know when it is either less than or equal to zero. So immediately what I want to do, I want to make sure that this is not subtracting past zero. So let's add an action get our bar, and now we can set the width to zero. Once our strength bar has run out, we want to break the vine. And I'm going to set that up in another function. Over on our functions tab, right click and add function. And I'm gonna call this one grapple break. Let's add an action, go into system, and I want to set the value of grapple launched to zero because once our vine breaks, we wanna be able to launch another target. We need to set our player on vine instance variable. So add action, let's go grab our player, scroll down to instance variables, set the value of on vine to zero. We want this grapple attached as well because it is no longer attached. So let's add an action, let's go grab our bar, scroll down to set value, grapple attached to zero. And what that will do over on our main event sheet is it'll make this false. This will no longer be true, so this will stop subtracting back in our function. Once our vine breaks, we want to make sure our player is not attached to it anymore. So let's add an action, get our player, and scroll down to our pin behavior and unpin. And now we can take care of the vine. So add an action, object, vine, and scroll down to the sign and set enabled to disabled. And then let's add another action and go grab our target. And we can just destroy that. And we wanna make sure that our vine is not visible on the screen. So add an action, get our vine, and set the visibility to invisible. And one last thing, as we did up here with our grapple strength, we wanna reset that. So add an action, get our bar, Scroll down to set value, and we want to set grapple strength back to 100. Back on our event sheet, once we set the width to zero, we can go ahead and call our function. Add an action, go into functions, and call grapple break, the one we just made. That should cover everything for the grapple bar. Let's test that out. There's our bar. We attach, it immediately starts shrinking, and when it gets to zero, it snaps, we fall. And then it goes back to 100%. So now, when I attach, we swing, if I jump off, it goes back to zero, or back to 100. I attach, it starts shrinking, I jump. So it just 
acts as a cooldown bar for as long as we are swinging. But once we dismount, we can throw another target. I'm going to exit out of that. So another little effect I want to put in. In our grapple strength group, when our grapple is attached, I want it to be at full opacity. I'm going to add an action to the grapple attached is true event. Go get our bar and I want to set the opacity to 100. And then if I just right click in this blank space under the event, I can go to add insert below and go into system and let's type in else. So as long as the grapple is attached, we're at 100% opacity. Otherwise, we're going to drop it down. So let's add an action, go get our bar, and we want to set the opacity. And I'm going to go way down to 15%. So let's test that out. So we're not attached. There's our bar. It exists. That might be... It's not so bad. It's not so bad up against the background. It's when it covers the tiles, uh, it's hard to see. But we don't really need to see it when we're not using the grapple. But once we use it, there it is. It pops right out. And when we don't use it, it still goes back to 100%, but it fades. So, just an added little effect there. All right, so I'm going to close some of these up. And that is actually all there is to the cooldown bar. Most of this project is completed now. In the next video, we are going to add some visual effects to make it look more like an actual grappling hook. So I'm going to end this video here. I will see you in the next one. And don't forget to save.